Hey guys, how's it going? So today's project is probably going to span over the course of a few days. I'm just going to work on it a little bit at a time, I think, because it, there's a lot of moving involved and a lot of steps. I still have to go gather some props, but I want to finish decorating the patio area up by our Versailles garden. We did plant a couple of containers for fall earlier on, but I've got a lot more I want to do. In fact, Aaron is in the tractor right now and he is coming up to pick up these urns. I think we're gonna utilize the great big gallery scroll urns that we just got from Unique Stone up there. Uh, but it's gonna require the tractor. They each weigh 600 pounds. And they are gorgeous. The more they sit here, the more I love them. And here's Paul, he's gonna help us out here. He's gonna steady the container so it doesn't accidentally wobble off. Cause if that thing starts to wobble, there's no stopping it. Okay, so they've set this one down here. I think we're gonna remove the black ones for now and put those somewhere else. So I need to cut the drip. Boom. All right, there go the black containers. They're gonna go flank the opening of our back garden. It'd be nice to have a new look up here for a little while. We've had these black containers up here for a really long time. I already like this new look. <laughs> to have those black containers gone that had the little lollipop pines. The lollipop pines have been there for a couple of years. The pots have been here for numerous years. So it'll be nice just to have a new look. So here's the question. Of course, we'll get the urn off the pallet, but not until we have it placed closer to like exactly where I want it, because they're just too heavy. But I'm wondering if I should leave the urns kind of out in the gravel area and then utilize the dirt area where Russell's standing right there, where the pots were to put straw bales and all my pumpkins and that sort of thing, or if I should kind of reverse it and do the pot up there with straw bales down here with all the pumpkins. I just fear that if I put the urn here, it'll be too close to this one and I'll have to reconfigure the back containers, which is not a big deal. It's just a little extra moving. And I told Aaron those black containers could flank either opening on the back formal garden, so I'm gonna go see which one he picked. <laughs> ah, looks like they picked this one over here. Let's go take a look. Oh yeah, that'll work there. I need to just kind of move them around a bit um, and face the lollipops the right direction. One of them, I think it was this one, was kind of more in the shade, so it has a little bit of a wonky shape, but it's nice to have something back here. Well, we got one off the pallet. I forgot to turn the camera on. So we're gonna work on that second one here. And I'm not sure that this is exactly where they're gonna go. Um, and keep in mind, there'll be a bunch of straw bales and other things around it. But at least they're here. We can kind of scoot them around if we need to. Good job, Aaron. He's not listening to me at all. What? I was praising you, singing your praises. Oh, well. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Did great. So they are sitting on the ground now. And the next step is to go get some straw bales and start bringing pumpkins over, cut some corn stalks. We still got a lot to do. 
Real quick, I wanted to give you guys a look. Those actually do not look too big for this space. It looks awesome, I love it. We may shift the benches over, like this one over this way and this one over this way once we get straw bales in there. I don't want it to look too congested. All right, we're at the produce stand. I do see some straw bales there. I hope those are for sale because I don't see any other stacks of straw out here. Lots of pretty pumpkins though. Whoa, check out the stem on that. Dang. Yep, those are the ones for sale. Do you want to just uh, pull the truck up? I don't know how many we can fit, but I was kind of hoping for six. Today we did get the straw bales placed. Uh, we got the corn stalks cut, but they haven't been placed anywhere. You can just see them leaning right there, as well as a little bit of the pumpkins out of the barn. So this evening I'm just going to try to just place those few things, and then I'm gonna decide whether or not, or not I wanna actually plant these urns, or if I wanna just do corn stalks and not have to worry about watering them. Uh, or getting soil or any of that business. But I think it's gonna look really cute and I really like this whole approach of doing it a little bit at a time. <laughs> it's quite nice. But I think it's shaping up pretty cute, especially once I get some pumpkins placed and I kinda wanna do them on the ground around the urn and kinda around the side there to really cap off the whole display. And then of course do a bunch right up here as well to bring some color in. Yeah, cause I already need to replace these mums. Look at this. This is why I hardly ever use mums in pots. Cause this is what they do. They bloom out, look awesome for a little bit, and there are buds. Like I could come in here and painstakingly deadhead all of these spent blooms, and it'll bloom a little bit more, but it'll never really bloom out like it did the first time. So oftentimes I just pull these and put something else in their place. They did last over a few weeks though, so that's good. So what I'm gonna do at this point, and for as long as it takes me to get this project done, I'm just gonna try to capture what I can, and then in the end, we'll take kind of a grand tour of the whole area. pretty much done at this point. It's actually kind of hard to capture the whole thing <laughs> because it's such a large area. It's so much fun to decorate because you can really do some big scale things. Like those urns do not look too big at all for this area, which I kind of thought in the beginning that they might be a little bit too big. Uh, also super fun to have all of those pumpkins and squash to pull from that we grew ourselves. Those did not cost us anything but the seeds and water, well, just the water setup we water with a well. So, I mean, just pennies compared to what I normally pay for pumpkins and squash, and I've never bought this many ever, because they're just so expensive to buy. Um, that's why growing, extra reason why growing them is awesome. So let's just have a little tour of the area. I hope that the colors look bright enough. We're getting into the evening now. Russell, of course, showed up. Cheddar was just, oh, there he is. Cheddar's here. I do have two containers that I brought up thinking I was going to use them in a trio here and I didn't but I think I'm going to plant them up over there but I'm going to do that another day. So 
the gallery scroll urns look amazing. I love them. There's the corn we grew out in our new cut flower garden area in both of the urns making quite the statement. I wasn't sure if I was going to just do corn or if I was going to do plants in there, but I think the corn is very low maintenance and it looks really striking. And then there are three straw bales on each side, so two on the bottom and then one stacked up on top. And then just a menagerie of pumpkins and squash. Now right to the right here, I did put another container. That's the Twain container there. Uh, I just needed something in the back because it just looked like too abrupt of a stop, if that makes sense, because we've got so much interest and then there was nothing. I was just gonna pile up pumpkins, but that would have taken a lot to pile them up right there. So we brought one of those up. So I've got a little lime hydrangea, an Osaka white ornamental cabbage, a Morgana white mom, and a Vinca. I think it's really pretty. Like it's not, I don't know. It's striking without being like super full of color because we're dealing with a lot of color over here. It's very easy to like overdo it, especially this time of year. So let me run over to this side. Oh, that one's looking a little more brilliant because the light is coming in. The sun is like right down here. It's coming in this way. So that looks really pretty. And then here are just a few of the pumpkins and squash we grew. I used a lot of the ornamental ones up here. There are some edibles too, but I saved the really good edibles. A lot of them in the back to keep in the root cellar. Okay, the other side is pretty much the same. I used a lot of the same things, repeat. And then the next layer back, we already planted up these two containers right here. The super tunias I put in there got aphids. <laughs> They're still in there. I just piled the pumpkins on top. We're supposed to get a freeze so the aphids will die. Not super worried about it. I uh, have a stack here. We've got a flat stacker white pumpkin, a fairy tale that's not colored up, which actually worked in our favor, and a, a porcelain doll right there on top. So a stack on both sides. Then just a menagerie around the base, my pumpkin lanterns, which I don't have candles in yet. I'll need to get some candles for those. And of course those will go away after Halloween and we'll just be left with all the autumn stuff. And then in the two wicker baskets to the side, I had a bronze colored mum in there or orange and it was all bloomed out. So I popped it out and put another white in, which is kind of nice. It ties to the containers over here. So same for this container right here. It was just so nice that all of this stuff was pretty much done already. Like that was the first phase. This was the second phase. This was the third phase. Cause that would have been an awful lot to do in one setting. And then up here, just did a little stack of what I had left over that was brought up. And then I created another simple garland from stuff out of the yard. I did the same thing last year. And I'm honestly, I think the camera shut off. I'm not sure how much of it I captured, but all it is, you guys, I've got four, oh, my hands are so dirty. I've got four hooks up here, like those little hooks that have the screws on the end, cup hooks, I think. And I just wire pieces of Scarlet Curls Willow, like a branch of Scarlet Curls Willow to one. And then I kind of just like loop it and um, hook it to the other, other one with wire and I just keep doing that and I can weave stuff in and out and then I've got some firelight hydrangeas in there which will dry some corn tassels and some love in a puff vine which I I assume it's gonna wilt a little bit and turn brown but that's okay because it's just a very natural looking garland but if I step back I actually felt like it looked super empty without something right there like I either needed something up here or right there because there's so much going on there's so much weight down here I needed a little bit of interest up high. And I have no idea, guys, why there's only one light here. Like, if I could find a second light that matched that, I would probably see if we could get it wired. Just the weirdest stuff around here <laughs> sometimes. And then the other thing I did was finished up the window boxes. I had said I was going to clean the ivy out and boxwoods and do something different. And you can see that that didn't happen. So I just decided, let's just leave it. They look good. We'll put in the ornamental cabbage, some yellow pansies, and just call it. And of course, these were already here. Russell, you are the perfect color for an autumn display. You know that? 
your perfect color. I actually asked Aaron if he could take Benjamin on a quick ride on the gator around the new property so I could finish up this project because Benjamin loves it. He calls it his pumpkin patch and he comes out, last night I got the pumpkins kind of set on the straw bales and he came out and was rearranging everything. He loves to pick them up and put them somewhere else and he calls each individual pumpkin his pumpkin patch. I like this pumpkin patch and this pumpkin patch and this pumpkin patch. It is super cute and I don't mind that he does that, but I really wanted to show you kind of the finished product. And like I said, I've got these containers that I'll plant up probably with white mums. I've got a couple left over, so it'll kind of tie into this whole display. And it's super fun. I usually only focus my attention on one entryway per holiday because especially like for this one, it's quite big and it can be overwhelming. And so I figure, you know, as long as I have like a wreath up on the other doors, maybe a single pumpkin or a pot or something like that, We'll keep the other ones very simple and then I'll go out all out on one and that way it seems very manageable and it doesn't end up being too much. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really had a great time and it was super nice just kind of plugging away at it slowly, which is different for me. So it's something I might adopt for years to come because it does make things a little bit more pleasant, a little bit more manageable. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye.